We're going to show you how to assign VLANs dynamically from RADIUS to unleashed access points. We're using RADIUS on a Windows Server 2012 R2 installation, and we're also utilizing Network Policy Server and Active Directory. In the description box below, we've included great resources to assist you, including links to our how-to hub. Be sure to check it out often, as we are always updating the content. Before we can dynamically assign VLANs, there's some things we need to do in Windows Server. First, we need to create an AD user. So we're gonna right click on users. We're gonna go down to new and select user. Now, as you can see here, we've given a username of client. This is simple that we can remember. And as you can see here, we've assigned a password and the password will never expire. So we'll go ahead and click on next, verify it and click on finish. One last piece, we need to give the user permissions, so we're gonna right click on the created user, go down to properties. Here we're gonna select the dial-in tab, and under network access permission, we're just gonna allow access. Now we're gonna to go to member of and ensure that they're a member of domain users, which is exactly what we want. We'll click on apply, okay. And now we can jump into network policy server and start getting that built. Just so that I don't create confusion, the users don't have to be a member of domain users. They can be a member of any group that you choose. This is just what we used for this example. From within Network Policy Server, we right click on Radius Clients and we select New. Now this is where we're gonna add our unleashed access point. Here, we've given it a friendly name, we've given it the IP address that's configured on the access point, and we're gonna create a shared secret. Now the shared secret is something that we'll have to configure on the unleashed access point later, but remember, this should be independent to passwords that you use in your existing network. One important item to note is if you have multiple unleashed access points in your network, you need to add the master unleashed access point as that's where the radius traffic will source from. Okay, we can see our unleashed radius client is here. It's been configured. So now we need to configure a connection request policy. To do so, we just mouse over connection request policy, right click and select new. We're going to use Unleashed as our policy name. Keep it simple and generic. Now we do need to add specific conditions. Here we need a port type. So we're gonna go down to the very bottom and select NAS port type. This tells Radius what kind of clients are connecting to it via what medium. So when we click Add, here we can add wireless IEEE 802.11 and click on OK. Now when we click on Next, the next couple screens we don't need to make any modifications to. So we'll click on Next through those. Now in your environment you might, However, for this example, we do not. When we reach the end, you can see here that configure settings, you can make changes if need be, and you can add attributes. Everything looks good. We're gonna review it, and we'll click on Finish. Radius follows a top to bottom precedence in the policies. So we're going to take our Unleash policy and right click on it, and then click on Move Up until it's reached the top of our list. All right, next, we need to create a network policy. To do so, this is really gonna surprise you. We right click on Network Policies, and we go to New. Now we're gonna give it a name. This will probably surprise you as well, but we're gonna use Unleashed and we'll go ahead and click on Next. Remember earlier when we created the user client and we verified that they were a member of domain users? Well, the reason we did that is for this piece right here. This type of authentication, we wanna handle it so that we're authenticating for a group of users, which is much easier to manage than handling it per user. So as you can tell, we've gone ahead and clicked on Add and now we need to select User Groups and then we'll select Add again. We're gonna click on add groups and here's where we can type domain and then we'll just click on check names. This will give us a listing of all the groups that contain domain in it. Here we need domain users, highlight that, select okay. That looks good, we'll select okay again. You can add more if need be, we don't need to. Select okay and now we're gonna click on next and here we just wanna ensure that access granted is selected. Okay, now when we're talking about EAP types, we're gonna add both PEEP and MS CHAP, but we need to do PEEP first because when we select it, we need to go in and highlight it and go to edit and verify that we have the correct certificate selected. Here we can see that we do, so we select OK. Now, as you can see, I've added MS CHAP. The last piece is we need to make sure that encrypted authentication and unencrypted authentication is selected. When we click on Next, it's gonna tell us that there's a help section for this. Would you like to read it? We're gonna say no. We don't require constraints, so we're not gonna configure anything here. We click on Next. Now, this is the part where we configure the VLAN and how Radius is gonna return that click on add. Now what we need to include is some attributes, some radius attributes that tell radius what to return back to our unleashed client. So we're going to include tunnel type. We're going to click on add and we're going to use commonly used, 
we'll use VLANs it's right there. So we'll select OK here and OK again. Now we need to give it a VLAN number or the VLAN ID. That's Tunnel Private Group ID. We we'll click on Add, Add again. Here it's a string value. We just use 333. Now 333 is the VLAN number that we've created for this example. We'll click on OK. Click on OK once again. Now we need to assign a protocol on how to return this information. So that's used with tunnel medium type. And the tunnel medium type that we're going to use is very standard. It's 802. So we select that, click OK, click OK again. OK, once we're finished there, we go ahead and click on Close. We can see the information that we've configured here. Everything looks great. We'll click on Next and verify this once again. All that information is fine. If you need to change anything, of course, you can go Previous here and make adjustments. We don't need to. We're going to go ahead and click on Finish. Just as we did with our connection request policy, we're going to move the unleashed network policy to the top of our list. Same method, right click, move up until it reaches the top of your list. Here you can see we've connected to our unleashed access point via our web browser and we're looking at the dashboard. We're going to navigate to admin and services and expand that and then we're going to expand services. If we scroll up a little bit here we have AAA servers. Now we need to select this and click on create new. We'll select radius here and what we're doing is we're configuring the access points radius information and what radius server to point to. So we've included a name, the IP address, and the shared secret that we configured on the radius server earlier. Once we're done here, we just click on OK. Now that we have a radius server that we're pointing our unleashed client to, we need to create a Wi-Fi network. So we're going to expand Wi-Fi networks and we're going to click on Create. In the Create WLAN window, we're going to give it a name. We'll just call it Radius Unleashed. Now we're going to select our authentication method of 802.1x EEP, and then we're going to select our Radius server as our authentication server. If we go down a little bit, we can expand Show Advanced Options. Here we can see the Access VLAN. It's currently set to 1, but we're going to enable Dynamic VLAN Assignment, and we'll go ahead and click on OK. Next piece of this, we're going to watch a client connect to this access point and use Radius to authenticate. So as we navigate down to Admin and Services and then we expand Administration, we have a Diagnostics function in here. If we open Diagnostics, we can go to Client Troubleshooting. Now within Client Troubleshooting, we'll click on the Click Here link and we're going to input a MAC address. This is the MAC address of the client that we're testing with. For this example, it's an Android phone. Now once we click on Start, it's going to take some time until the client connects, but once it does, we're going to be met with this screen here. This is such a cool visual feature that's included in Unleashed. We can see all of our client authentication traffic, who it's talking to, what it's sending. So we see that the client device is talking to the access point, it's talking to the AAA server, and eventually it's going to talk to the DHCP server. Now we can see all of the radius and eat messages that are being exchanged back and forth but the greatest part about this is it goes through the entire sequence so here we can see that we have EAP success right after our radius access accept then we go into a four-way handshake and then finally we're at DHCP discover DHCP acknowledgement and finally we see that we've received an IP address and unleashed has been informed that that client belongs to VLAN 333 which was dynamically assigned this screen looks noisy for lack of a better term and that's because you see a lot of EAP requests that are being exchanged between the client and the radius server. The reason for this is it was a very noisy environment. We have a lot of access points all concentrated in one area so the clients exchanging this information back and forth just based on signal issues. You shouldn't see this in your environment but if you do just know that's why. Something to note when you look at this is unleashed access points don't display the VLAN ID that was assigned as you would see it in Zone Director or Smart Zone. However, you can still check the client's IP address subnet to verify the VLAN assignment. Other than that, that's it. We've successfully configured a dynamic VLAN assignment in Unleashed. Before you go, don't forget to check the description box below and access any of the resources we've provided. Thanks for watching.